Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Musarat Ali, and I'm the Senior Investment and Trade Advisor here at Investment Fiji. And it is my pleasure to be your MC for today's webinar. Before we start proper, kindly note that you may type your questions and comments in the chat box provided. And our team will try to answer during the live session, or we will um, really or duly get back to it uh, after the webinar. We will just give it a few more minutes for attendees to join in before we start proper. Thank you. The Managing Director of Japan External Trade Organization, or better known as JETRO, Mr. Masaki Takahara, industry partners and business representatives, participants from Fiji, Australia, and Japan, ladies and gentlemen, Bulabinaka, Konnichiwa, and a very warm, warm welcome to you all for joining us today. It is an absolute pleasure to welcome you all this afternoon for the Fiji Japan Investment Webinar and we appreciate your interest in knowing more about the investment opportunities um, in Fiji and Japan. This webinar is actually part of the Fiji Japan Investment and Trade Mission 2021, which was officially launched earlier this month, um, basically to celebrate over 50 years of bilateral relations between Fiji and Japan. We encourage you all to visit the official website of the Fiji Japan Investment and Trade Mission to learn more. So do kindly take note of the website address shown on the screen at the moment. Our program for the day is quite simple and includes two main presentations before we open the floor for audience questions. Our key speakers today will highlight more on the investment opportunities in Fiji and Japan. But to start off today's session, we bring to you a welcome message from Fiji's ambassador to Japan, His Excellency, Isikeli Matitonga. Ms. Sambula Minaka, and I extend warm greetings to you all from the Fiji Embassy here in Tokyo, Japan. I am uh, Isikeli Matitonga, Fiji's ambassador to Japan. We're delighted to be uh, partnering with Investment Fiji <coughs> in this uh, Suki uh, Symposium on uh, some products and services which uh, would be of attract attraction to some of the investors in Japan. The symposium is being hosted by uh, Fiji Investment Fiji in partnership with uh, JETRO Sydney, PIC Tokyo and of course the Embassy of Japan in Fiji. It's a month-long virtual initiative uh, and has the sole purpose of promoting uh, Fiji business and investment opportunity the opportunity with, for investment capital in Japan. The sectors that uh, we're targeting on this symposium would be tourism, agriculture, real estate, manufacturing, ICT, forestry, and services sectors that attend all those other those areas. As I said, the symposium is being hosted by uh, uh, to provide a platform uh, where where Fiji. Uh, would engage opportunities in Japan to provide opportunity in Japan uh, on what is available uh, with a potential investment journey in, in Fiji. This month, the Fiji Japan Trade Expo will exhibit six different categories ranging from health and cosmetics, food and beverages, fashion and apparel, primary industries, manufactured goods and business services. This exhibition is an opportunity for our exporters to connect with buyers and distributors of, in the Japanese market. It will provide our Fijian exporter, exporters the opportunity to engage virtually with key markets and explore new and emerging market opportunities. <clears throat> in terms of our export trade with Japan, it's uh, currently at about uh, 55 to 60 million dollars a year, making up mainly exporting tuna, mahogany, rain tree, rain tree timber, mineral water, 
which make up the majority of this export bundle. Japan, on the other hand, expose, uh, exports close to 200 million uh, to Japan, and these are largely in the form of uh, motor vehicles and machineries. The relationship between Fiji and Japan, uh, we're trying to improve the we deepen our relationship in the trade sector. And on this occasion, we are uh, with the leading products from manufactured goods, fisheries se and fisheries and forestry sector. However, we welcome Japanese buyers to explore other niche premium Fijian products, such as coffee, chocolate, ginger, turmeric, and cosmetics. Now, for Japanese investors to explore, invest opportunities in other sectors such as tourism and agriculture. And the, one of the last things that I want to highlight is the incentives that government provides in the last budget uh, to encourage trade and investment. And these are in the agricultural sector, provision of tax holidays for investment in that sector. In the film and audiovisual uh, industry, there are 75% film tax rebate. On investment infrastructure for ICT purposes, there are tax holidays and duty concession uh, packages available to be negotiated. BOP sector, business process outsourcing sector, uh, again, tax holiday and duty exemptions are also available. In the recycling business, any new investment in, re in recycling will be granted a tax holiday and a duty concession. I'm sure, ladies and gentlemen, you agree with me. Opportunities that are available in Fiji is ready for your investment and that it will deepen our relationship further in this important area and contribute to the sustainable development of the people of Fiji. God bless you all. So that was the keynote address by our ambassador in Japan. I now invite our first speaker, Mr. Kamal Chetty. Uh, Mr. Chetty is actually the acting CEO of Investment Fiji, and he will present on Fiji's economic update, investment opportunities and restructured tax incentives that Fiji is currently offering to our investors. Thank you, Musharat. Uh, just a everyone, and good afternoon from Fiji. Uh, as acting CEO of Investment Fiji, uh, it is indeed an honor and delight uh, to be speaking at today's event. And I warmly welcome our guests from Japan, Australia, Fiji for joining us in this important webinar. And also would like to acknowledge uh, the support provided by Jetro Sydney and also PIC and other organization that with our embassy assist, assisted us to make this possible. But before, the, uh, before that, maybe I'll also introduce uh, my team that is with me. So I've got Misala uh, Daya, who is our manager regional. He will also be part of the seminar and he can always uh, talk about all the opportunities that exist in Fiji. And also Musharat is introduced, uh, looks after the Japanese market. Uh, so she is your point of contact when you have any inquiries, or any support you need from us. So I'll just uh, maybe very, very briefly go over the role of Investment Fiji and talk about some opportunities. So Investment Fiji is basically a trade and investment promotion agency of the Fijian government. And our role is to connect you to the Fijian businesses and also uh, talk about the opportunities that exist in the country. But at the same time, we are responsible for taking Fijian products out of Fiji, uh, increasing Fijian business globally. So if you're keen on exploring Japanese market or vice versa, if it's Japanese importer, exporter is keen on to buying from Fijian products, would be happy to provide you those connections. So we also assist the investors that set up in the country. We assist them with the whole process and guide them through the process when you're doing business in Fiji. So we are basically a, a point of contact for all the investors and exporters when it comes to doing business of, if in Fiji or taking our products out of Fiji. So that's, that's our basic role. In terms of economic relationship, I think uh, His Excellency has already mentioned it. Uh, Japan is an important partner for us. Uh, we export about 43 million annually. Uh, it's uh, last year. And we import about 123 million from Japan. These are mostly vehicles, mineral, uh, vehicles, clinkers, and other products that we import. We also have some investment that has been uh, that is uh, happened in Fiji from for, from Japanese investors. So it's been about 5 million last year. In terms of, I thought to very briefly uh, talk about the, the current situation on the on ground uh, in terms of Fiji. Uh, it looks very positive for us. We are quite excited as we open up borders. 
uh, but uh, COVID did have impact. I'm sure it has had in Japan and other countries around the world. It did have an impact on our economy, and our econ economy is projected to contract by about 15.7 percent. But it's forecasted to also grow uh, later on. But it all depends on the situation of other countries, and we are so connected uh, globally. Uh, it will have impact on us as we open up. So with, with that into mind, obviously, I think important and very good news for us is as of uh, you know 11th October, we are about 80.3% fully vaccinated and the economy is uh, forecasted to open, forecasted to open at uh, 1st December to and starting from 11th December, uh, 11th, uh, sorry, November to other some countries and then 1st December is the official opening. So I think that's very good news, but I thought to highlight this as we move forward with the relationship with Japan and other countries. In terms of the support given by government, which was very important uh, during COVID, it was important for government to revive the private sector. And that was done through uh, a number of support given to private sector by the Fijian government in terms of uh, COVID-19 guarantee schemes. There were cash relief given to businesses. There were tax relief that were given to businesses. So there was a lot of things government did to support private sector. And I'm sure as we move forward in future, government continues to provide the environment for people to business to do business in the country, better environment to business in the country. So that's that's I thought to highlight just to share with you all the importance of you know the role of government currently is playing in with the private sector. Investment opportunities very very quickly. I'll just go over it. Uh, I think one of the symposium, uh, one of the website that we've launched as an organization, we had to go online. And when we went online, we had to really you know, see ways to promote investment and export during this time, especially when there were a lot of restrictions for movement and traveling. So we've launched uh, something known as the investment symposium and we have it for Fiji Japan investment symposium. It basically includes 17 tourism projects that are up for sale. Uh, five commercial properties that are for sale for investors to look at, and also 60 joint venture opportunities in 10 sectors uh, from the locals and from other projects that are available in Fiji. So you can have a look. These are some real opportunities, and some of the projects are already, you know, got most of the approvals sorted up. So it would be easy for you to connect with, with them, and we'd be happy to facilitate that. So we've launched this in order to assist businesses to make decisions or get connections easily in Fiji. As government also in the latest budget have uh, for the Fijian government has announced a lot of incentives. So I thought to highlight some of them, but obviously if you have any questions, you can get back to us. Uh, we'll be happy to give you more information about it. Uh, the first sector is tourism sector, which is an important sector for us and will remain an important sector, I believe. Uh, in that there has been a lot of incentive provided by government, not only incentive, but if you look at elimination of uh, things like service turnover tax, there is reduction in env environment levy for the sector. There is also uh, reduction in or uh, removal of departure tax uh, and also incentives given by Fiji Airways for visitors uh, when, they arrive, when they arrive into the country in terms of uh, discounts and other things. So there's been a lot of development in the sector that is assisting uh, it to open up. And I think as we open up, there's a lot of opportunities for investors. There's opportunities in sports tourism, cruise tourism, wedding tourism, retirement villages, and many more uh, that we can talk about in detail later on. And, and we have a lot of information around this. So there is a 20 year tax holiday for any investment now of 40 million, which I think is a very generous offer for investors. So this will obviously attract a lot of investors and it, it will give a lot of incentives to investors to invest in Fiji. So currently it has now moved to uh, from before it was uh, a lower amount of years to now 20 years. For agriculture sector, which, which remains an important sector for us and we continue to try to attract investment in this. Uh, we are looking for commercial agriculture farming, commercial agriculture companies that can really change how agriculture is done in Fiji. And there's huge opportunity. And I see opportunity in three terms. One is on the tourism sector. Obviously, when our tourism sector is back on full capacity, we import a lot of products globally uh, from overseas. About 74.4 million worth of products are needed for the sector every year. 74.4 million 
all the products are needed for this sector. And at the same time, Fiji has got a very unique brand and a very niche brand that you can take advantage of if you want to export you know, agriculture products out of Fiji. And also to supply to the local market, we import a lot of products in Fiji. So we think there's an opportunity for you to look at, at that uh, opportunities that exist for you to really you know, set up a business here, then supply to those segments of the market. And for us to attract those investment, uh, we, the government has announced a 20 year tax holiday for you to do agriculture investment anywhere in the sector, uh, anywhere in the country, sorry. And whatever you export is also, it has uh, a 60% export income de deduction facility that will assist you as an exporter. Manufacturing is also another sector we're trying to attract investment in, in and it's an important for us uh, as we think these are some efficiency seeking investors that are important for the country. So these incentives given up to 13 year tax holiday, 20 year tax, tax holiday for agro processing. So opportunities uh, basically we, we exist in Fiji is on pharmaceutical production in fish processing plants, building and construction materials, cosmetic, high-end furniture, and there's many more. So Fiji has a lot of uh, primary products that you can turn into very good manufacturing products. There are, there's a number of examples in Fiji that have done it really well. And I'm sure as an investor, that's an opportunity that you can take advantage of. And we are well connected uh, in terms of transportation, uh, air and both sea uh, across the world. Energy sector is another sector we are promoting to attract investment in. There's in incentives given up to, up to 13 years on that, but there's different segments in the sector that you can, you can look at or analyze and we'd be happy to you know, show you more information around it. One is obviously to supply to the main grids or to work with the, our energy supplier uh, in terms of you know, bringing new forms of energy, renewable forms of energy into the country. But also I think a reduction in, uh, Fiji imports a lot of fuel, a reduction in, you know, in, in use of uh, fossil fuel is also an opportunity for investors. So that's, uh, that's the reason government has given a lot of incentives for uh, vehicle charging stations and other things in the country. So in energy sector, there is, there is opportunity and with government really focusing on green, uh, you know, green growth and, and opportunities around that. So we think because of that shift of, or that's where our aim is, that's the reason we, we think there's an opportunity for investors to come in and work with you know, our companies here and also the opportunities that exist in the country. So we'd be happy to you know, connect and we'd be happy to assist you, give you more information on this. Other sectors that are you know, given a bit of priorities in, the, in this budget is on warehousing. Uh, also, there has been a lot of uh, incentives around construction of retirement villages also in recycling businesses and medical facilities, which is the health sector. Uh, there is also modernization of buildings uh, and also private hospitals. So there is the health sector, the construction sector, and also uh, the tourism sector has been given a lot of incentives in the new budget and we're trying to attract new investors into the country. So those, those are some of the incentives that we wanted to highlight, but as we, as we move forward, or if you're keen on to knowing more about these incentives, we'd be happy to you know, assist you, give you more information. There's more information available uh, that we can share with you. In terms of registration of business, we also try to make it, uh, we are trying to make it easy for investors to do business here. So you can visit, we've recently, we've recently, not actually recently, a few uh, years ago, have launched something known as Beast Fiji where you can go and find information about the registration process and the context that uh, is available or contact person in the government system that will give you the processes and assistance with setting up in the business in Fiji. So it's also a system where you can launch your application online. So you can note down the uh, website, but uh, the link would be happy to also connect you and assist you during this process. So in, to summarize, I think Fiji has, uh, as we open up uh, to be the, one of the safest you know, tourism countries in the world, uh, we have a lot of opportunities for investors, especially we being situated as the hub of the Pacific and access to the Pan Pacific market. We think for investors, we provide good opportunity with low corporate tax rate, 
shipping and air connectivity, well connected with IT, very educated workforce, uh, tax-free zones, a number of duty exemptions that are available, uh, will provide a good opportunity or good value proposition to investors to invest in the country. So we, we're looking forward to working with you and thank you very much for attending this webinar. And please feel free to get in touch with us and we'll be, that's Musharat's contact and we'll be happy to assist you. And obviously in the Q&A, we'll be happy to answer some questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Acting CEO. Um, so just a kind reminder, again, if you do have any questions, please leave it in the chat box and we'll get back to it during the um, Q&A session. Our next presenter this afternoon is Mr. Masaki Takahara, the Managing Director of Jetro Sydney. By means of introduction, um, Jetro, otherwise known as Japan External Trade Organization, is a Japanese government-related organization that works to promote trade between uh, Japan and the rest of the world. So I now warmly welcome Mr. Takahara to take us through his presentation, please. Thank you very much for your kind uh, introduction and very good afternoon to everyone, especially for to uh, uh, His Excellency, Mr. Iskeri uh, Matai Toka, Ambassador to Japan, and Mr. Kamal Chari, Acting CEO of Investment to Fiji. Uh, my name is Masaki Takahara, and I am the Managing Director of Jetro Sydney Office. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Investment Fiji for giving me this opportunity to speak to you today in respect of their efforts to promote bilateral economic relations through the month of October. Japan External Trade Organization, known as JETRO, is a government-related organization to promote trade and investment between Japan and the rest of the world. JETRO was established in 1958 and has a 60-year history. JETRO is engaged in many kinds of economic activities utilizing an extensive network of 76 overseas offices in 55 countries and 49 domestic offices in all prefecture in Japan. I am stationed in Sydney and have a jurisdiction over Australia, New Zealand, and the Pacific Island countries. Our office is engaged in promoting investment in the Japanese market by foreign innovative companies, promoting collaboration between Japanese companies and foreign startups, promoting overseas investment by small and medium-sized Japanese companies, and promoting the export of Japanese agricultural products and foodstuffs to overseas market. In the late 1980s through early 1990s, uh, when the Japanese economy was very strong, we are also involved in promoting imports from overseas to Japan in order to reduce Japanese, Japan's enormous trade surplus. However, as the growth of the Japanese economy had been overshadowed, the program to promote imports from overseas was scaled back and more emphasis has been placed on Japanese export promotion. Assistance in importing food stuff from Pacific Island, including Fiji to Japan, had long been provided by supporting participation in FoodEx, which is Japan's largest annual food trade fair. But unfortunately, uh, our support for participation in FoodEx ended after 2019, and now Pacific Island Center, PIC, is actively supporting. I've been stationed in Sydney for two years, and I had the opportunity to travel from Sydney to Fiji twice before the COVID pandemic. The first time was in November 2019 to attend a report session on an infrastructure investment experimental project subsidized by JETRO. A group of Japanese companies from Yokohama City demonstrated a project to generate electricity from household plastic waste in Suva. The results of the project showed that households do not segregate plastics out from their garbage, so the cost of sorting the garbage is too high for generator. But the group is still conducting the research to realize their idea. We are forced to suspend this program due to COVID in 2020, but we'd like to resume the program as soon as possible since experimental project of microgrid in Fiji is on the waiting list. My second visit was made in February 2020 when Mr. Nakayama, 
Parliamentary Vice Minister for Foreign Affairs led the joint public private delegation organized by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I remember being surprised to see the investment interest of Japanese companies in a wide range of industries, including tourism, marine technology, disaster prevention, power generation, and infra infrastructure. The second slide shows the economic relations between Japan and Fiji at a glance, and it is important to understand the current situation when considering future investment exchanges between Japan and Fiji. At present, the number of Japanese affiliated companies operating in Fiji is 24, uh, according to the latest figures. They are mainly engaged in tourism and trading. Look at the trade. Uh, it was introduced by the ambassador before. 55% of Japanese exports to Fiji are automobiles, mainly used cars. In terms of Japan's imports from Fiji, 67% is accounted for by wood and coke products, and 26% is fish, almost all were tuna. These two products account for over 90% of Japan's imports from Fiji. Moving to tourism, Fiji is a popular beach resort destination for Japanese. In July 2018, Fiji Airways launched a direct flight between Nandi and Narita, and about 15,000 Japanese tourists visited Fiji in 20, 2019, a 25% increase over the previous year. When compared to 2017, before the inauguration of direct flights, the number of tourists from Japan doubled in 2019. Some resort hotels in Fiji were stuffed with Japanese and Japanese travel agencies were actively conducting the tours for tourists. However, as we all know, COVID-19 pandemic has reduced the number of Japanese tourists to almost zero. Fiji continues to be a popular destination for Japanese tourists. And I hope that the pandemic will soon be under control and the tourists from Japan will resume. Fiji is also a popular destination for Japanese students of English, which is related to the investment opportunities for Japanese companies that I will discuss later. Before COVID, about uh, 1,500 Japanese students study English in Fiji every year, and the Japanese companies opened up schools to accommodate them. I believe that Fiji will continue to be a popular destination for English learners because the people are friendly and easy to live with, and the cost is far lower than that of studying in Europe or the United States. And then Japanese government, Japanese government provides official development assistance, ODA, to Fiji, uh, which is mainly used for infrastructure-related projects. And Japanese companies also participate in this project. It is noteworthy that Japan's ODA to Fiji is the third largest after Australia and New Zealand. I'd like to touch on the industrial areas of high investment potential for Japanese companies here. The establishment of factories to process Fijian agricultural products for export to Japan is one possibility. In fact, there are Japanese who grow cacao in Fiji and produce high quality chocolate for export to Japan. Regarding to tourism, as I mentioned earlier, uh, with Fiji Airways having direct flights, it is expected that the number of tourists will return to the pre-COVID level of 15,000 per year when pandemic ends, and it will stimulate the demands in tourism sector. In the field of ICT, it is easy to imagine that the domestic market will expand in the future and there is a possibility that Japanese companies will participate in upgrading systems and network. As I mentioned earlier about uh, English education, for example, the Philippines in Southeast Asia has always been popular among the Japanese as a nearby country 
where they can study English without spending a lot of money. And Fiji has been gaining popularity in the past few years due to the launch of direct flights. COVID-19 has made online English learning very, very, very popular, but I believe that there will continue to be high demand for 24-hour immersion in English living overseas. So there is potential for investment in the field of English education and providing services for international students. There are dozens of English schools in the Philippines, but only a handful of English schools are providing services in Fiji, I believe. The Fijian government has announced an ambitious policy of 100% renewable energy by 2036. In March this year, a Japanese company called Energia and JBIC, a Japan Bank for International Cooperation, announced that they would take a 44% stake in Energy Fiji Limited, EFL, and accelerate the use of renewable energy. EFL is a vertically integrated company that integrates a power generation, transmission, distribution, and retail. I'm confident that there is a lot of room for Japanese companies to contribute to Fiji's transition to 100% renewable energy. In addition, I understand that Fiji has an electrification rate of nearly 100%, but the rate is lower in some remote islands. And I believe that Japanese companies can contribute to the establishment of microgrids that utilize renew renewable energy sources, such as solar and hydropower. As Japan is an island nation, there are many remote islands, and this is an area where Japanese companies can make use of their experience. Next, as we all remember, the earthquake and tsunami that hit northern part of Japan in 20, 2011. Japan has a lot of earthquakes and is always cautious of tsunami. There are many Japanese companies with disaster prevention technologies. Lastly, Fiji's location in the Pacific Ocean could be utilized to build a dock for international ships to be maintained and repaired. However, it would require a vast amount of money and it may not be realized only by private sectors without a huge budget allocation from Japan or Fiji's government. This is the last slide. I'd like to take a look at Japanese investment in Fiji and foreign investment in Japan. On the left side of the slide are figures of Japanese investment in the Pacific Island countries over the past five years. In general, Japanese investment in the Pacific Island countries has not been very active. Looking at the relationship with Fiji here, there has been no Japanese investment in the past five years in the statistics. On the other hand, there has been a pullback of uh, uh, investment in 2018 and 2019. However, the number of Japanese companies uh, in Fiji is the largest at 24 uh, in this region. As I mentioned earlier, Demand in the tourism and the English language education sectors is expected to recover rapidly as COVID pandemic ends, and we expect more Japanese companies to invest in these sectors. On the right side of the slide is a ranking of the amount of investment in Japan from overseas in 2020. The UK and the United States account for about 80% of the total. Both Australia and New Zealand have now been very active in investing in Japan. If you look at the uh, Oceania region here, including the Pacific Islands countries, uh, the result is that in the result of 2020 is that 130 million yen, about a little more than 1 million US dollars of investment was withdrawn, partly due to COVID-19. Jetro has been, uh, Jetro has long been engaged in promoting investment in Japan by foreign companies. Japan's economy has been sluggish for the last 30 years since the end of the bubble economy in the early 1990s. In order to revitalize the Japanese economy and create job opportunities, 
Jetro has been promoting foreign companies to invest in Japan. In recent years, Jetro has been focusing on attracting foreign companies with innovative technologies that can contribute to improving the productivity and efficiency of the Japanese economy. The Japanese economy is said to be rather slow in digital transformation, but this transformation has been dramatically accelerated, triggered by COVID pandemic and more engagement of foreign companies is expected. Although labor costs and prices are higher in Japan, if software and other digital products can be produced by computers, there is no need for factories or large capital investment in this internet era. We do welcome foreign companies with disruptive ideas and advanced and cutting edge digital technologies in the industries like carbon neutral, mobility, retail, healthcare, agri-tech and smart city. And please let us help you to invest in Japan. Jetro provides legal and market consultation and temporary office facilities in major cities in Japan for free. Please let us know when you are ready to invest in Japan. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Takahara Sen. We really appreciate you taking out your time uh, this afternoon to be here with us today. Just a kind reminder to all our participants, uh, we will be emailing you all the presentation copies for reference. So please do take note of that. Uh, we will now open the floor for questions. Yeah, so we, yeah, we have received a few questions already. Thank you, Musharat. Uh, so we'll, we'll just, uh, if you have any questions, as mentioned initially, it's a week-long program. Uh, please, uh, you know, you can get in touch with us and Musharat and I would be happy, or my team would be happy to assist you. Uh, it's, I think Japan is a very good market uh, for us. So it's, an, and we have a very long, a long relationship with the country, with Japan. Uh, so it's important that we you know, continue to push for economic side of things. So we will uh, definitely get in touch with you. Uh, and if we're not able to answer any of your questions today, uh, please do get in touch with us. We'll be happy to you know, connect you to the right people that can answer. I think we've got a few questions and few uh, comments. So we'll be happy to go through. So I think first one is uh, Bula Ibel. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. And we will definitely get in touch with you. Uh, and you can also get in touch with us if you need any information, any market insights or anything from uh, for you to help with the Japanese market. We also have uh, for investment Fiji, we also have market guides for different countries, uh, market plans for different countries. And uh, we'd be happy to share with you if you need certain information around entering Japan, Japanese market. So there's a few questions. One of them is from Wesale. Uh, Wasale, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, you've been asking about, you know, the education sector, uh, the students from Japan. I think it's a big opportunity. So we'd be happy to please get in touch with us. I think you you mentioned about some variety types you've been facing. We'd be happy to facilitate and assist you so we can obviously grow that sector with you. And also we've got a question from Praveen, uh, who's uh, been asking us about uh, the pharmaceutical products into cover products into Japan. So Praveen, we have done some work around this uh, on pharmaceutical uh, you know, cover products into Japan. Uh, we would be happy to share with you. Uh, and please, you've got my email address and Musharat's email address. You can get in touch, Lisala's email address. Get in touch with us. We will we'll definitely you know, give you some insights onto the cover industry into Japan. And uh, there's also a question on the seaweed uh, industry. Uh, the, uh, from Harshana, uh, she's she's been talking about seaweed and what is the opportunity of uh, uh, basically uh, seaweed into Japan. So I'm I'm not sure, if Mr. Mr. Masaki Sen, you've got anything on the seaweed industry in the, in Japan? But yeah, we'll be to share maybe later on with the, with the Harshana. So can I talk about that? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, okay, yeah, see, uh, edible seaweed, and are you familiar with that? <laughs> and yes. it's called nori or kombu, or there are a lot of kinds of edible seaweeds, and it's a part of Japanese traditional foods, and we eat that uh, in the daily lives. So it's so popular, and uh, there may be a, a potential uh, potential for exporting the edible seaweeds from 
like a Pacific Islands. But uh, as a, as far as I understand, these edible seaweed could be nurtured, nat nat nurtured in a very cold water, at the cold temperature of the sea, and it is so difficult even for Japanese producers to keep to to uh, well, how can I say, nurture, nurture, foster. The, these kind of edible uh, seaweeds in Japan. So I don't know uh, how, what what like a temperature of the sea in the Pacific Islands like. But uh, if uh, the, the temperature is going up in uh, uh, history, and it it may be uh, getting difficult to uh, uh, have a great uh, uh, edible seaweeds in Pacific Islands. But so long as you can produce good one, there is a possibility in to uh, export to Japan because we eat them. Uh, in our daily lives, and the market is uh, as big as Japanese population. Yeah, that's my answer. Thanks, thanks. Uh, I, I think Arshana do mention to us in the in the question is basically that uh, because of raising temperature, uh, the seaweed is you know production have gone down. So she thinks uh, Fiji do produce seaweed. So there is I think an opportunity. Uh, Shana, please get in touch with us. We'd be happy to you know work with the team and see if we can assist you get into the Japanese market. And also, uh, we've got another question uh, from Mr. Raj. So, uh, Mr. Raj has been facing some issues with uh, Japanese companies or agent verification. And she's in, uh, he's involved in car hire business. Uh, so, I'm sure you can get in touch with us. We'll be happy to connect with you with the contacts that we have in Japan. We, we work with very closely with our embassy. We have got TIC and other contacts in Japan that would be happy to you know, connect you for you to verify that. So it shouldn't be a problem uh, for us. I think there is also a question from uh, yeah. Kat. Uh, not even... The question is, uh, does Japanese also invest in hemp for different types of manufacturing products and value? So the question is, I don't know, Mr. Masaki's uh, son, if you can answer that, it says, do Japanese also invest in hemp at the moment uh, for different types of manufacturing products and value at the moment? I'm yeah. not sure. <laughs> in Japan. Sorry, uh, I don't get the meaning of hemp. What, what does it mean? So in industrial hemp, it's basically, you know, industrial marijuana uh, that is used. So it's quite popular in a lot of countries at the moment. Uh, you know, it's used for other products like in garment and other things. So uh -huh. I'm, not, I'm not sure if it has started in uh in japan yet okay um i think i believe that the fiji is uh, like a, a manufacturing place for uh garment and the apparel for like australia and i think if you are enjoying the like, preferred like a tax or customs for uh particular countries like australia and uh, i i understand that uh, labor cost is reasonable in fiji and also you have traditionally the good uh, manufacturing skills of the garment and apparel. And uh, it is a good uh, potential area for Japanese like, apparel and garment manufacturers to uh, have the manufacturing base. But uh, the problem is that if, if the, you know, Japan or if the, uh, the Fiji can enjoy the preferred uh, uh, like preferred tax or customers to when you export to Japan, it, it you know, it, it makes the cost uh, really different. So, so long as uh, Japanese importers, manufacturers can uh, import the garment or apparatus from Fiji, and there is a possibility to uh, invest into uh, like something like a hemp or any like stuff could be used for making a garment or apparel. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Yeah. Saki -san. Yeah, we uh, can, maybe you can you know get in touch with us. Obviously, uh, we haven't received much interest from Japan on that sector specifically on industrial hemp, but we've received from other countries around the world. Uh, so we'd, we'd be happy to. I think it's still at exploring stage in Japan. So we'd be happy to you know see if you can we can give you the right answer for that. And uh, yeah, I think. Please, uh, I don't have, uh, I don't see any other questions, Musharat, unless anything you have. No, I think that covers part of the question as well. And I guess uh, this also brings us uh, to the end of uh, today's webinar. I will now invite my colleague, uh, Mr. Lisa Ladea, the Regional Development Manager here at Investment Fiji, uh, for his closing remarks, please. Thank you, uh, Musharat. Uh, 
Ladies and gentlemen, today's uh, webinar is going to only showcase uh, Fiji's investment opportunities in the areas of agriculture, tourism, manufacturing, and energy, but also introduce us all to the investment environment in Japan. There is no doubt the significant untapped economic potential that exists between our countries. At this juncture, I would like to comment on the strategic uh, partners, uh, Jetro Sydney, Mr. Masaki, Takahara, and the team uh, for supporting and striving to enhance the trade and investment between the two countries. Please note as part of Investment Fiji's, uh, Investment Fiji's investment and, and, and trade mission, we will have an export related webinar on the 21st uh, of this month, that is October, where we're exploring export opportunities in Japan and that will be the, the, on the agenda. With these few words on behalf of Investment Fiji, thank you very much for your attendance uh, and do feel free to contact our team and we'll, uh, for your investment and export related inquiries. Thank you. Thank you.